I'll tell you this story, and I haven't told this story uh, publicly, but I'll tell you this story. Uh, my my teacher there, Rabd al-Hajj, who really, I, I have never met uh, somebody that em embodies the spirit of Islam more than this human being. Because he's somebody that, um, he's 92 years old, and since the time he was a child, he was given to worship of Allah and to study him. And at about the age of 20 years old, he begged his mother permission to make Hajj on foot during uh, a time when Mauritania, the people were wearing leather on their backs in order to, uh, to survive because they were so poor. And his mother gave him permission with the promise that he would come back. And he walked from Mauritania to Sudan. And when he got to Sudan, he sat with the ulama there. And he told me that once uh, a Sudanese man told him, he said, Sharif, Sharif, Ta'al. And he wanted to show him something. And it was a silent, it was a film, it was an outdoor cinema, a silent film. And, and I said, what was it? And he said, there were two giant pictures of men and they were shooting each other. And he said, he did, I said, what did you do? He said, I said, A'udhu Billah, and I left it, which is fitrah. And then he went to the thing he remembered that he told me the Egyptians, when they're amazed at something, they say, Ya Salam. And then he went to the Haram and he prayed in the Haram and made his Hajj and he walked from Mecca to Medina and he st spent some time in the Mujawara and then he went back to Mauritania on foot. And he began teaching and he's been teaching there for over 70 years. His habit every day is to get up about four hours before Fajr and to begin making tahajjud. And when he recites the Quran, he weeps from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then at Fajr he goes and he walks to the masjid. At 90, 92 years old, he walks like a young man. I was there last year. And he calls the Adhan himself and then he leads the prayer. And he does his tahajjud for maybe three or four hours for the prayer he recites from Juz Amma. Because he said, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man ya ummakum fal Whoever leads the prayer amongst you, let him shorten the prayer. And then he sits from Fajr and he teaches until Dhuhr. And students come and he teaches until Dhuhr. He goes and he has lunch and has a short nap. And then he gets up after and teaches until Asr. He goes and he makes the Asr prayer and then teaches until Isha. And people come and wake him up in the night and he gets up and he teaches. And this has been his life for over 70 years. This is, and, and thousands of Muslims have studied with him from all over uh, North Africa and West Africa. And one of the things I was once in his presence, and he's a Bedouin man, and he, his robe was, had some uh, dirt on it. And I, it occurred to me that the hadith of the whole shatr al-iman and al-nalafatul min al-iman, it just crossed my heart. And at that point, he put down uh, his book and he looked at me and he smiled and he said, Hamza, Asma'at al-hadith al-badalatu min al-iman. Have you heard of the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said that badala is from iman? And I said, I, I've never heard that. And he said, go get the qamus and we'll look up badala. And he had me look up badala and it was a, a word that meant somebody that doesn't particularly care their outward appearance and that that was part of iman. About several years later, I was in Medina and I mentioned this to somebody and he said, I can't believe that that's a hadith. And I, it, I, it kind of hurt me that, and I was coming out of the masjid, I went to a bookstore and I climbed up a ladder, pulled out a book and it was Hujjat Allah al-Baliga, Imam al-Kandahlawi. And I opened the book and it was Imam al-Kandahlawi explaining the difference between At-Tahur Shatr al-Iman wal Badadatu min al-Iman. He said both of the hadiths are sound, but he said al badada is for the people who live in the desert, the Badia that if they are concerned with their outward appearance, that it leads to riya and khuyala. And it's not a good uh, attribute, but the people of the city should be more concerned about their appearance because they're people of hada. And I just, this man really, uh, what, what I got in living with him was literally a glimpse of, of ibadah, of what real ibadah is. And I think many of us have forgotten that. We've really forgotten what it is simply to humble ourselves before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
and to, to really study the deen, to learn the deen, and to become people of, of understanding. The Prophet ﷺ said in the Sahih Hadith that Muawiyah relates, مَنْ يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ The one who Allah wants good for him, he gives him understanding of the deen. He gives him understanding of the deen. And part of understanding the deen is acting on it, it's implementing it. So the, really the spirit of Islam is, is based on learning the deen and acting on it and taking it out to people and taking it out in a state of humility and submission, not taking it out in a state of arrogance and self-righteousness.